हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजित कुमार महापात्र फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल कॉल्ड जेबलॉन्स की डायग्राम अंडर पेपर एंटाइटल कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ मेटीरियल्स टू हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजित कुमार महापात्र from the department of physics and astrophysics university of delhi new delhi today we are going to discuss about a module called jablonski diagram under paper entitled characterization of materials 2 so students let's see what we are going to learn in this module first the schematic representation for observance and emission of light by the molecules after exposing the material with photons from the visible spectrum second the various processes for emission of light from materials exposed to different external energy sources that are also described third the decay processes involved during the absorption and emission of light will be discussed so in the introduction professor alexander jablonski described the schematic representation of observance and emission of light by the molecules after exposing the materials with photons from the visible spectrum these schematics are referred as jablonski diagrams and represents the arrangement of energy levels in vertical axis the horizontal lines so the different energy states for a particular molecule and consists of board lines showing the limit of an electronic energy state that includes different vibrational energy levels and for their rotational levels a number of transitions occur when photons are incident on a molecule the electron goes to higher energy level and decays by a number of different ways which can be understood by the jablonski diagram the various energy level involved in absorption and emission of light by fluorophore can be understood by jablonski diagram possible energy states first is the ground and excited states the lowest energy level which is electronic in nature is called the ground state while the others electronic energy levels are called the excited states according to the increasing order from the lowest energy scale the levels are referred as first second third excited states etc the difference between the upper vibrational level of lower electronic state and lowest vibrational level of the upper electronic state is called the energy gap as we move towards the higher electronic states the energy gap reduces and shows overlapping of different vibrational levels of upper and lower electronic states the singlet and triplet states the excited state which has the spin multiplicity of 1 that is same as the ground state is called the singlet state and which have three multiplicities is termed as the triplet state this difference in spin states make the transition from singlet to triplet or triplet to singlet more improbable than the singlet to singlet transitions this singlet to triplet or reverse transitions involves change in electronic state this difference between the singlet and triplet state is about their multiplicity for this reason the lifetime of triplet state is longer than the singlet state by approximately 10 to the power 4 seconds fold difference the different energy states are shown in figure 1 the electrons in ground states are always diamagnetic and the electrons in the excited state behave such a diamagnetic or paramagnetic depending on the behavior of the state of the transition electrons 
formation of singlet or triplet states make the excited state diamagnetic or paramagnetic respectively the jablonski diagram the jablonski diagram describes the possible transitions for electron after exposure to light and is sketched in the figure the spin multiplicities of the ground and excited states in molecules can be used to explain the transitions the direction of arrows shows the direction of transitions for electrons from an initial state to a final state non radiative transitions are indicated by slanted arrows and the radiative transitions are straight arrows the vibrational ground states of each electronic state are indicated with thick lines the highest vibrational states with thinner lines and the jablonski diagram summarizes the possible transition process including various excitation and emission behavior and are described in the following slides so we have learned the jablonski diagram demonstrates various absorption and emission processes during the luminescence so here we will study about the absorption what is emission and what are the different decay processes involved in the luminescence process and how jablonski diagram is describing all the processes individually so first let's go for what is absorption the absorption in the first transition in the jablonski diagram that is absorbed due to absorption of photons by the electrons when photons of specific energy incident on a material the electrons absorbs the energy and get excited from the lower energy state to an available higher energy state the vertical lines with arrows shows the transition from the ground state to an excited state the schematic representation of absorption is shown in the given figure the molecules of the materials could absorb certain wavelengths of light specifically the wavelengths that have energies corresponding to the energy difference between the ground state and excited state absorption is a very fast process with transition time of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 seconds the allowed transition must conserve spin during the excitation of the electron hence the excited state should have the same spin as that of the ground state so that the transition from the ground state to a singlet excited state is allowed but to a triplet state is not allowed because it is violating the spin conservation rule of delta s is equal to 0 now the second is the emission process here the electron in the excited state is not stable and the average lifetime of an electron in the excited state is about 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 8 seconds after that the electron decays to the ground state with emission of light of frequency lower than the incident frequency this process is called emission and this process is shown in the given figure by an arrow downward decay processes the decay of the electrons from the excited state is of two ways radiative decay the decay of electron from an excited state to the ground state with the emission of radiation is termed as radiative decay of the electron 
the radiative decay could occur in two processes one is fluorescence second is phosphorescence and in the non radiative decay the decay of the excited electron without any radiation is termed as non radiative decay of the electron there are a number of processes by which an electron decays non radiatively fluorescence the process in which the excited electron directly decays from the excited state to the ground state with emission of a photon having an energy less than the energy of the observed photon nu prime is less than nu this process is called fluorescence this takes place when the ground state and the excited state having the same multiplicity the materials that show fluorescence are called fluorophores the lifetime during fluorescence is very small and the fluorescence diminishes rapidly after the excitation source is removed the fluorescence process is shown in the figure phosphorescence the process in which the excited electron loses some of its energy and goes to a metastable state instead of coming back to the ground state directly the metastable state has different multiplicity than the ground state so the electron cannot get back to the ground state directly and the electron first flips its spin and then comes back to its ground state the lifetime of phosphorescence is longer than the time of fluorescence hence the fluorescence lasts even after the exciting source has been removed and the schematic diagram for phosphorescence spectra in the process is shown in the figure non radiative decay the decay of the excited electron without any radiation is termed as non radiative decay of the electron there are number of processes by which an electron decays non radiatively including vibrational relaxation internal conversion external conversion and intersystem crossing we'll be discussing in next two slides first is vibrational relaxation this here an electron decays its energy non radiatively and this transition takes place between different vibrational levels of the same electronic state the process in which the electron decays from the higher vibrational level to a lower vibrational level of same electronic state and loses its energy non radiatively here the energy of the electron is given away to other vibrational modes as kinetic energy and this kinetic energy may stay within the same molecule or it may be transferred to other molecules this process is also very fast and occurs between 10 to the minus 14 to 10 to the minus 11 seconds since this is a very fast transition it is extremely likely to occur immediately internal conversion however if there is an overlapping between the vibrational levels of different electronic states then there is a probability that the excited electron can go from the vibrational level of an electronic state to the vibrational level of the lower electronic state this process 
is called internal conversion and mechanistically is identical to vibrational relaxation by the combination of internal conversion and vibrational relaxation an electron in an excited electronic state returns to the ground electronic state without emitting a photon the multiplicity is conserved in both the processes the processes of non radiative decay the third process is external conversion deactivation of the excited electronic state may also involve the interaction and energy transfer between the excited state and the solvent or solute in a process called external conversion low temperature and high viscosity leads to enhanced fluorescence because they reduce the number of collision between molecules thus slowing down the deactivation process the fourth one is intersystem crossing the process in which an electron in the lowest vibrational energy level of an excited electronic state goes into a vibrational energy level of a lower energy electronic state having different spin is termed as intersystem crossing and is shown in the figure the intersystem crossing is a process in which there is a cross over between electronic states of different multiplicity as in the singlet state to a triplet state s1 to t1 transition the probability of intersystem crossing is enhanced if the vibrational levels of the two states overlap intersystem crossing is most commonly observed with molecules that contain heavy atom such as iodine or bromine the spin and orbital interaction increase and the spin becomes more favorable paramagnetic species also enhances intersystem crossing which consequently decrease the fluorescence the triplet state lies just below the singlet excited state and these triplet states are called the forbidden states the electron cannot be jumped from the ground state to the triplet state and the figure demonstrates the different transitions in the intersystem crossing fluorescence quenching fluorescence quenching is a process for spontaneously decreasing the fluorescence intensity of any fluorophore a variety of molecular processes can result for quenching these includes excited state reactions molecular rearrangements energy transfer ground state complex formation and collisional quenching the substances that decay the intensity of fluorescence are termed as quenchers wide variety of substances that act as quenchers for fluorescence quenching may occur by several mechanisms first is collisional or dynamic quenching second the starting quenching third is the quenching by energy transfer dynamic quenching the quenching resulting from collisions between the fluorophores and the quenching agents is called collisional or dynamic quenching 
the dynamic quenching agent provides a non radiative route for loss of the excited state energy common quenchers include oxygen iodine ion cesium ion and acrylamide here in the right hand side diagram when you excite with an energy the materials absorb that energy and goes from the ground state to excited state and is given in the blue lines and after going to the excited states the electrons comes to a metastable state as in shown in the red arrows and after coming to the metastable state it can come back to the ground state by emitting light that is the fluorescence process but in otherwise it by using a quencher the electron comes back to the ground state and is shown in the straight line and a curved arrow here the mechanism can understood page in the first the excited state molecule returns to the ground state via emission of a photon and the excited state molecule collides with the quencher molecule and returns to the ground state non radiatively as in shown in the second item of the figure this uh, figure also demonstrate the transitions before and after collision with the quencher static quenching in some cases the fluorophore can form a stable complex with another molecule if the ground state is non fluorescent then we say that the fluorophore has been statically quenched static quenching is the result of the formation of a non fluorescent complex between the fluorophore and the quencher here the fluorophore then mixed with the quencher q it makes fluor dot q that means that is a new complex the association constant for the quencher fluorophore complex describes the effectiveness of a static quencher here ks the association constant is equal to fq bracketed divided by f bracketed and q bracketed there fq bracketed is the concentration of the complex and q and f are the concentrations of free quencher and free fluorophores as shown in the diagram the ground state of a fluorophore was a two benzene ring molecule in this case and the non fluorescent quencher which is orange circular dot is non fluorescent and when they mix this quencher and fluorophore they make a non fluorescent complex formation and the ground state complex is shown in the figure fluorescence resonance energy transfer or fret this is the quenching by energy transfer static and dynamic quenching processes require direct contact between the fluorophore and the quencher a separate type of quenching is resonance energy transfer sometimes called 
fluorescence resonance energy transfer or FRET in which the energy from an excited state is transferred to an acceptor molecule. This transfer occurs without photon emission but the process is related to obj observance in some respect. When the donor molecule observes a photon and there is an acceptor molecule close to the donor molecule, radiationless energy transfer can occur from the donor to the acceptor. FRET results in a decrease of the fluorescence intensity and lifetime of the donor probe. It enhances the fluorescence of the acceptor probe when the acceptor is fluorescent. Donor fluorophore absorbs blue photon as shown in the diagram. The excited donor has two choices. It may emit a green photon or transfer its energy to the acceptor, which may be another fluorescent molecule. The probability for each of these two processes depends on the efficiency of the transfer. And this process is shown in the diagram as the decay of fluorescence intensity through FRET. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. This lecture summarizes different transitions or observance and emission of light by the molecules after exposing the materials with photons from the visible spectrum. Various processes for emission of light from materials exposed to different external energy sources are represented schematically through the Jablonski diagram. We have learned about how to summarize the ground and excited state with electronic and vibrational energy levels. Singlet and triplet excited states depends mostly or defined by spin multiplicity of the specific state. Spin multiplicity of one represents single state and the spin multiplicity of three represents a triplet state. The lifetime of a triplet state is longer than the singlet state by approximately 10 to the power 4 seconds. The emission of electrons from the excited state is showing two processes referred as radiative or non-radiative. The radiative decay could occur in two ways referred as fluorescence and phosphorescence depending on the lifetime of the emission process. The electrons decay non-radiatively by vibrational relaxation, internal conversion, external conversion and inter-system crossing. This module describes the fluorescence of quenching which decreases the intensity of fluorescent light. In this module, it is learned about the different types of quenching processes including the dynamic quenching, static quenching and fluorescence resonance energy transport. Thank you.